We live in this anti-oil world right now. I'm frustrated with that, to be quite honest. We come from the West where our energy consumption is so high and everybody takes our energy availability for granted. A lot of these people are saying what you're doing is bad. You're, you know, you're, you're doing this oil and gas exploration in Africa. I wish they would come here and see the women and men who walk kilometers every day simply to get wood to cook. The area that Paul selected is over what is called the Mozarabani anticline. An anticline is a dome of rock and that's basically that dome is the largest unexplored structure in Africa. So that's basically what got Mobile really interested in taking in this, wanting to actually go out there and find, it, find what it was about. In the early 80s, there was no energy crisis in this part of the world. You know, you really couldn't do anything with gas worldwide, never mind just in Zimbabwe, there was no electricity shortages. The petrochemical industry was in its infancy in South Africa. And the interpretation at that time being that it was predominantly gas prone with only a small amount of possible lighter liquid hydrocarbon fractions. 30 years on, things have changed. the opportunity to meet with the chiefs of the local community where we're working. I asked them, I said, you know, there's all this pressure from the West against oil and gas activity. What do you think of that? And they said, we want those people to be quiet. They don't understand the challenges we have. They talk about energy transition. We don't have energy to transition from, was their comment. I asked what having the availability of a bottle of gas would do for their communities. They said that would be an absolute game changer. They say the world are all talking about electricity and solar. He said, my people cannot cook on solar energy. They so desperately need it. And of course, the, a lot of the things that we benefit from in the West, everything from clean water, water purification, water treatment, in addition to all the energy benefits that we enjoy for transportation or cooking or heat. These are all things that uh, will help this economy prosper and give people the time to spend on going to school and spend on getting better and spend on starting a business. Again, a lot of these people spend their entire day uh, simply either hauling water or trying to collect enough wood to cook. That needs to change and we're going to help end energy poverty in this part of the world if Invictus is uh, successful. So Invictus is a junior oil and gas explorer based on the Australian Stock Exchange. Following the exodus of Mobile from the area, the area was basically abandoned, no one was interested. Our partner, Paul Chimboza with One Gas, took out a license over the area and Invictus entered into an agreement with Paul to do the exploration within that area. In the past, people drill, dig, blow up, move dirt, and a lot of times they do it blind and Polaris are here to help uh, with a safe way to image Mother Earth before she's disturbed and at the same time identify precise areas where there's opportunity. Everything from laborers, drivers, vehicles, groceries, uh, we drive from the local community. So we were actually uh, acquiring all of our food and everything from Azerbani 
We've hired uh, about 170 people as part of the project. We've provided training, uh, everything from HSC, HSC inductions, driver training, food handling, uh, a whole range of uh, training processes go into getting the crew ready to work. So when we uh, come into a country, we're given a map of what the client is looking for uh, as far as uh, underneath the ground. And uh, so we're putting a handheld GPS to try and utilize as much as possible of the existing roads access out in the field so that we can minimize the impact on uh, the environment and the people. Uh, once we've established where the lines are going to go, we then uh, contract local contractors. Then we send in the survey crew slash the layout crew in this case, because now we are up with the 21st century technology that the layout crew is attached to the survey crew. So the process that we are doing is we are going to use vibrations. So for these vibrations to give us some information, we use geophones, which we plant uh, on the ground the geophones will then be able to collect some data from underneath the surface. Then when the geophones have collected data, we then harvest the data that they've collected, and then the data is then interpreted, and then we can be able to see whether there is oil or there is no oil underneath. The vibrator is a 60,000 pound machine. Uh, it's made by Surcell, which is a French company. We set up on a, a survey point, two vibrators, one behind the other, uh, about a meter and a half apart, that uh, we send the signal, it goes to a recording box. That triggers the vibrator to, to do a sweep. And the sweep is a 16 second sweep, eight seconds of listing time. And we do that every 25 meters. And we do that, you know, these lines that we're recording out here, you know, the one we're on right now is like 80 kilometers long. So this is the recorder. It's, this software is built by Seismic Source. It's called SourceLink. It's designed for any wireless system, which Seismic Source actually had one of the first wireless systems, so they've developed a software for many years. The vibrators, they have computers in them for navigation. So as they get to their point, they navigate. They drop their pads, they send a ready tone to the recorder through the radio. The system automatically grabs the nearest shot point and sends the tone back. They'll start shaking the sweep, which is a 16 second sweep, and then listens for eight. And then the QC will come back, as long as it's within tolerance, we'll keep the VP, and then they'll move on to the next one. In the field, they get the data when they do the vibrations. They pick up the data, and that data is what we extract from these nodes. When we extract the data, we save them. We create space for the nodes again to go back to the field for another deployment. So when that one is done, they are ready to go back and again get more data, like the process continues. It's like a rotation. The backing and cooperation that we've had from the Zimbabwe government all through, particularly from the Ministry of Mines, has been exceptional. They have really backed us all the way through. And the backing that we've been receiving from the traditional leaders and the local councils has been exceptional. They have really been going out of the way to try to assist us in any way that they can. <laughs> it's been exceptional. It's as simple as that. Uh, we couldn't, as a company, ask for more. The disturbance that that will make to the local population and the environment is minimal. We have and won't create any lasting environmental damage out in the Zambezi Valley. <laughs>